Are you buying an RV and are looking at the differences between an absorption and a 12 volt compressor refrigerator? You have plain. Or do you already have an absorption refrigerator like us and want to upgrade to a 12 volt compressor refrigerator? Are you looking at the options between Norcold and Dometic and wondering which one to pick? We're gonna be sharing the installation of our Dometic 12 volt refrigerator and we'll share the pros and cons that we encountered during this time. And stick around for our detailed power analysis and spreadsheet that you can use later on. So come on with us as we get this thing installed. And here she is. Today, Host offers two options for refrigerators. One is a two-way absorption refrigerator, which is what we have today. It works on 110 or propane. The other Host option is a Norcold 12-volt compressor refrigerator, which is quite nice as well. This is really exciting. If you've been watching our videos from the beginning, we have had immense challenges with our absorption refrigerator. And I think that's actually, I don't think there was anything wrong with the refrigerator. I think we were just using it in the wrong way. We were expecting this thing to work well in high temperatures and very low temperatures. And I don't think that is reasonable. I don't think it's working correctly. We left it sit for a year and a half during the pandemic because we were getting our truck outfitted. And I believe we've got a blockage in the lines. Somebody mentioned you can turn it upside down and do all of this stuff. You know, so we're, done. That crap, we're done. We're done with it. But true to ourselves, we decided to go a little bit different and we are putting in a Dometic 12 volt compressor. We wanted to go with something that helped reduce the propane and would be a little larger. There are two main reasons why we decided to choose this. It is the same footprint as the Norcold, so we believe it should get into the camper okay. We're going to find that out today. Uh, the other thing that drove us towards this are two features that were not available on the Norcold. For one, this is a variable speed compressor in the unit, which ultimately I hope will show that you're using less power once it gets down to a certain temperature. The second option is the fact that this refrigerator is frost free, <gasps> which if you've had any of your absorption refrigerators or even that Norcold refrigerator, you know you have to end up defrosting it every month or so if you're using it full time like us. And if I have that option to go frost free, why not? So. We are going to be installing this today. We're going to be taking out the old absorption refrigerator and putting this new one in. So with the doors on, we'll call this 23 and a half, 27 inch. So it'll be almost at 28 inches. It'll be close. So we might have to take the doors off of this as well. So back in 2020, we ended up doing a high level of insulation around this sucker. I'm wondering if that's actually gonna cause problems with this Dometic refrigerator. Uh, that's called foreshadowing. And our to-do list is coming with us. We're going to a 12 volt, so this won't be uh, applicable anymore. So disconnecting the AC power, plug in right there. Nice plug-in. And then uh, disconnecting the DC power. Just two screws on here. Make sure you pull the fuse first though. Because otherwise you get a little sparkage. And that should be it for connections. The other screw is underneath this tape here. Right now I'm just pulling it out of the hole it's in. It just kind of wiggles out. Getting her out. And this is what it looks like without the refrigerator in. Won't see it that way for long.
after a lot of duct tape and reflectix cutting. Unfortunately, I ran out, so I couldn't do this wall, which is a bummer. I was able to get everything else, and the big ones, obviously, are this back wall and this side wall, so not too bad. But now, we gotta get this sucker in. Yay. We did have to take the doors off, so Gary is putting them back on. There are three modes on the Dometic refrigerator. The first mode is performance mode, which has cooling levels one through five, where one is the least and five is the most amount of cooling. This mode will automatically turn on and off the compressor and fans to keep the fridge at an optimal temp. The next mode is silent mode. In this mode, the compressor stays at a constant speed, but the fan works at low speed only. You only have temp levels one through three. The third option is eco mode. In this mode, the refrigerator turns on the compressor and fans automatically as needed, but you only have the lowest level of cooling. The freezer is separately controlled by a slider switch in the back. I've typically left it in the mid setting and it's done really well. Also, this doesn't seem to impact the temperature of the refrigerator. After installing and using this refrigerator for the last few weeks, we have a list of pros and cons that we wanted to share. All right, let's take a look at our refrigerator. We just got through doing a grocery run. The top shelf is probably the tallest area, so that's probably where you would put your milk or other things, or you can put it down here. We ended up buying these plastic containers, and I can take this out do whatever I need and then throw it back in. They end up giving you four shelves, which is almost too much. I ended up making a really short shelf here for eggs. I'm sure I'll continue to reorganize stuff, but so far, so good. We kind of went a little nuts here. We don't normally have room for something as luxurious as egg rolls. Have a ton of room for meats in here. I've got my fruit and veggies. Totally loving the room in this thing. Another thing that I really like about this refrigerator is that I can get in there multiple times a day. I'm not worried about it getting back to the right temperature. With the absorption refrigerator, it took a good 12 hours anytime we opened it to get back up to temperature. The absorption refrigerators are shockingly a lot more expensive than these 12 volt compressor refrigerators. That kind of surprised me. I really do like the handles on this Dometic refrigerator. They're very tactile. After you get home and want to keep air flow going in here, they have this option to just have a little gap in there and that will help with keeping mold out of there. It's a lot easier than trying to find that little tiny plastic dojobby that you probably lost. And with anything, with those pros, there are a few cons and I wanna share with you what we have observed with this refrigerator. We use the existing 12 gauge wire, which during the operation of the unit, we found out that there was a two volt drop. It's not cooling well because it didn't get enough voltage. We ran a separate 10 gauge wire straight to the batteries so that we can just minimize that voltage loss and that seemed to cure it. Now we're down to a 0.3 volt drop, even with the Norcold or the Kodematic. If we get down to a 10 volt range, that it does not work very well. And after 10 volts, 10.6 volts, it'll cut off. So if you do have a big voltage drop, you won't be able to operate your refrigerator. When we were installing it, we cut off some of the fan circulation at the very bottom. So there are fans underneath the refrigerator. Those fans blow the air from the compressor into your cabin. And if you have something blocking them, that reduces the efficiency of the refrigerator greatly. I ended up having a piece of Reflectix that got tangled when we were pushing that refrigerator back into that compartment. The problem is getting a shelf out with the door here. In our rig, since our chairs are right here, there's literally no way to get these shelves out unless we unscrew our chairs. But when you install this thing, you better sure hope that your shelves are in the right place. 
Although I've explained all three modes, I would only recommend using the performance mode. First, we tried the performance setting. Level 3 seemed to work really well. I'm really happy to know that I've got two additional settings to go up if it gets a bit hotter. Overall, I'm very happy with performance mode. The second mode I tried was the eco mode. The eco mode only gives you that first setting. Very quickly, we realized that that was not going to work at all. The freezer was actually getting above 32 degrees. I don't want to lose the stuff that I have in my freezer. I did try that two other times just to see if there was some variability. It got the same exact results. It seemed like the refrigerator was okay, but the freezer was thawing. Ultimately, uh. I do not recommend eco mode if you're using your freezer. The third mode that we tried was the silent mode. That gives you temperature settings one to three. And that definitely did better than the eco mode. The temperature ranges were a bit greater on silent mode, going a little bit lower than I liked, a little bit more above, but I'm guessing that is also to try to keep the load down. I think it was better, but in general, I'm going to be using the performance mode any time that I can. The biggest con for these refrigerators is the fact that they take a lot of juice. And that ultimately is going to impact your ability to boondock unless you are using a larger battery bank and preferably uh, lithium batteries since you're able to draw those batteries down a lot more past that 50% mark. If you're using wet batteries or AGM batteries, you can't go less than 50% of the capacity of the batteries before you start damaging them. So now let's get into the nitty gritty of how much this thing draws. As I mentioned before, the eco mode was a, a no-go with our freezer, so I don't have data on that. So first off, performance mode, that was averaging about 60 to 65 amp hours a day um, in usage. And again, at that performance mode level three. As far as silent mode goes, I was able to get somewhere in the 42 to 46 amp hour range for that on a daily basis. We'll probably use performance mode anytime we can. But when I talk about 46 amp hours or 64 amp hours, really what does that mean? And how does that impact you when you're trying to boondock? It's not as obvious sometimes, so I created a spreadsheet to hopefully help understand what your usage might be. I'm an engineer, so I inherently love spreadsheets. This spreadsheet is broken down by different ratings of things that we typically use. You can either check them if you use this thing or uncheck them if you don't. I have estimated some of these things based upon how often we use them. For example, I said we usually will leave three lights on for 12 hours a day. Feel free to change the amount of hours in there to give you a more accurate feel of what you might use. I like to assume that I can go two days with out sun and still be okay with my full system. After that, I'm either going to move or I may turn on my generator. In the spreadsheet, you can change the amount of days without sun, but I'm going for the two days. I was able to get just a little bit under 400 amp hours, which not surprisingly, we have 400 amp hours of lithium batteries right now. Now that we've added this Dometic 12 volt compressor, we are now looking at a two day usage of 479 amp hours, which is definitely going to have an impact on how we use this rig. In reality, we may be looking at uh, adding another battery or two or maybe different batteries in the future. Hopefully we provided you some additional information to make that decision for your rig as well. We hope to see you next week and hopefully maybe we'll be out on the road. We'll see. Talk to you later.